Daily Dash of Life. And I just love me some hot chocolate. I never need an excuse to drink a cup. Whether it's hot or cold outside, it's a year-round thing for me. Now any of you out there who already know how to make it know that you really need to take your time to do it right. You have to first start out by heating your milk low and slow. You don't want to burn or scorch the milk. That's why a low heat setting and cooking it very slowly. Make sure that you're stirring it very often so that it doesn't scorch on the bottom or stick or burn in any way. Anyone who's ever done either knows that the taste and texture is off and that is definitely not what we want. Taste test your milk periodically and when your milk is warm, gradually begin to whisk in your cocoa mix. You want to whisk this because you want to get out all the lumps and then just continue to do that until you are satisfied with the chocolatey taste. You also want to keep track of the temperature of your milk, so continue to taste test it. When it's at the heat that you want it to be, then you can take it off the burner. The milk should be hot enough to melt the marshmallows, but not hot enough to melt your tongue. I cannot stand to have my tongue scorched in the beginning of a hot cocoa drink and then not be able to taste the rest of my hot cocoa for the next couple of days. Oh no. What a waste. Oh no. Oh no. So often people overheat their hot cocoa and it really takes from the flavor and the taste of the hot chocolate. When it's just the right temperature, then I get to enjoy the full flavor of the hot chocolate and it's highly enjoyable for the cups. It's safe and enjoyable. Don't forget to spice things up with a little topping station. Or if you're alone, don't be afraid to try new things. I recently tried putting some whip on top of my hot chocolate and sprinkling some chocolate mint chips Ooh, that was so, so good. But on the other hand, I've seen people mix the hot chocolate with candy canes or little peppermint sticks, and I don't really care for that particular flavor. And of course, you can never go wrong with marshmallows. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> I guess that's the crowd favorite. <laughs> it is. That's your favorite? Okay. For my regular sized mug, I add five marshmallows, but for my 12 gallon sized mug, I add a handful, and for the little teeny tiny teacup size for the cups, mm -hmm. I only add three. I look at marshmallows as if they're lumps of sugar, which they basically are. The more lumps of sugar, the sweeter the taste. And I don't particularly like mine too sweet, the marshmallows should complement the hot chocolate, not overpower it. The perfect pair to our hot chocolate perfection are our bite-sized homemade cookies or our tiramisu, our banana nut bread tiramisu. So delicious. My cousin threw a hot cocoa party last year and is planning another one this year. The little cousins got to be in their Christmas pajamas while playing, watching Christmas movies, eating, and of course, enjoying hot cocoa. I don't know who had more fun, the mama bears or the little cubs. If you have a favorite flavor or a topping you like to use, please let me know in the comment box because I would love to give it a try. I know we are in Texas, but we've had some sleet today and we're actually supposed to be getting some snow tonight. It's gonna be below freezing. And as soon as I pick up Big Bear from school, then we are gonna warm ourselves with a big hot cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Toodles.
watching. To subscribe, click my watermark and click any video icon for more videos or to start a playlist. Check out bonus footage at Instagram and Twitter at a daily dash of life. Toodles!